Hey guys, um, I just recently started watching the new show called Push Girls. It's on the Sundance channel. On IO Digital Cable, it's 192 for anybody who's interested, and I hope you'll be interested by the end of this video. Uh, I decided to do recap videos every week for hopefully what will be two episodes a week. Now, Last night there was two episodes on which I didn't know, so I only did one recap because I saw it ahead of time on the website, so I just sat and enjoyed the show last night, but I will be doing the day after the show, I'll be doing recaps, and I'll get the other recap done sometime this week. Anyways, uh, the show started out with a girl named Tiffany, who was going to get gas for her car. Um, all these girls are in L.A., and she starts to talk about how L.A. is a very body-conscious place to live, which we all know. It's not only body-conscious, but it's very fake and plastic, and there's not many real people there. If you ask me, she talks about how she used to be very shy. Um, because people would stare at her and some people would just flat out ask what was wrong with her, which I can completely relate to. When I grew up, when it was cute and acceptable, I used to say, stop staring, I know I'm beautiful. Now, at 25 years old, that would make me come across as a conceited adult, so I don't say that anymore, but it was cute back then. Uh, she's been in a wheelchair for about 10 years, and she talks about the general misconceptions of people being in a wheelchair. Now, I can think of many more, but what she said is that people in wheelchairs don't take care of themselves, they sit on the couch, play video games all day, and they don't do anything. And she talks about how she's more active being in the wheelchair than before her accident which I can completely relate to. I do yoga. I Before yoga, I used to do the gym. I was in physical therapy. I go to church every Sunday. I go have my daily walk to the library, which is about a half a mile. I go to the beach. In the summers, I go to see my friends perform. You know, I'm not antisocial just because of the chair. Uh, Tiffany is a lot like me because she likes to be very independent and doesn't really like to ask for help and she talks about how she likes to flirt and guys notice her and she goes that um, with 26 inch rims on the side of her ass it's hard not to notice her which I thought was really funny and one of the questions she gets a lot is if she can have sex which she says yes she can obviously the next girl that we got to meet was Mia, and they showed her waking up at her boyfriend's house. Now, the two of them have been together for about a year and a half. She says she likes to uh, date able-bodied guys, which I can relate to. I mean, it may seem shallow, but it's just, you know, everybody has their preference, and in my list of what I like in a guy, it's just an able-bodied guy. This is the longest relationship that Mia's ever been in, and because she likes her freedom. And this is what I liked about Mia's storyline is I don't really like her, how she comes across yet. I mean, this is the first episode, but I liked how there was enough about her I didn't like where a lot of people I feel like are gonna concentrate on her storyline with the drama in her life as opposed to how she is as a physically challenged person. Which that's how I like people to look at me as just a person and not somebody with a physical challenge. So that I think she has going for her. And who knows, I'll probably end up liking a lot of things about her after a while. But she's the only one out of the four girls who didn't get in a car accident. She's been paralyzed since she was 15, 
because of it's an ABM uh, blood vessel rupture in the spinal cord. This didn't happen quick. It was like gradually throughout the day she started to feel numbness and didn't feel her legs, which would scare the crap out of me. One of the things that I found funny is that they showed her getting into the shower and even though it was her back, I would never put myself out there on a reality show naked getting into the shower. She gets in just like me, but I just wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, before her incident or injury, uh, she was very independent and she strives even harder to be that way because she doesn't want to lose that independence that she had, which I strive to be pretty independent too. The only thing I ever asked anybody to do for me is make sure the shower head's down. And I have three other people taking showers in the house. And all I ask is if it's down after they're done. That's it. About my problem with Mia is that after a year and a half, she still doesn't know if her boyfriend is the right person for her. I have a problem with that because you shouldn't stay in a relationship for that long where the person is clearly invested in you if you're not invested back. But, not my problem, not my relationship, just my opinion on it. Next we met Auti, who I like to call the badass of the bunch. She's very spunky, she was doing wheelies in her apartment, doing like hip hop style dances. Yes, people in wheelchairs can dance. At the peak of her career, she was a professional hip-hop dancer. Grew up in a really bad area in the hood. When she was 19, someone noticed her at a club and got her an audition to go on tour with NWA and Easy e She does come across as a diva, and she is a self-proclaimed diva. People call her a diva. She calls herself a diva. But as the show went on, you, you grew to like her. I, I really like her. Uh, she had her car accident when she, when she was 22 years old. Uh, her and her husband have been married for five years. His name's Eric. Uh, they met five months after her accident, and they show them, you know, in the grocery store, him helping her, you know, at home. And they're just really, really cute together. And they both really want to have kids, and she can, but she's just not sure if she wants to give up her career just yet. I don't think she has to. I mean, she could do both. This is where I started to kind of change my mind about Mia. All the girls are out to lunch and Mia talks about how she never saw herself as being best friends with people in wheelchairs. Now, I can completely relate to that because I'm the same way. Generally, most people that I've met in wheelchairs, I'm not going to say all because I do have some friends in wheelchairs, but most of them don't, are very negative. They don't have a good outlook on life, and I'm not that way. Maybe it's because I was born this way and I've never known any different, but even people that are born that way, they, they just don't have the same outlook on life that I do, so I just choose not to associate with people like that. Even able-bodied people that have that kind of a negative attitude, I just try not to associate with them. Lately, as I've gotten older, I try to help them instead of being put off by it and just, you know, I'm not going to associate with you. I try to help, but generally, I, if it becomes too much, I can't, I wouldn't be able to become close with somebody like that. This is where we find out that Tiffany and Angela are roommates. Uh, Tiffany said also that she would never have thought that she'd be best friends with people in wheelchairs until she met Angela. Uh, Angela and Auti have known each other the longest. Uh, they met 10 years ago, right after Angela's accident. Then Angela met Mia 7 years ago. Uh, they met during an acting class. And then they met Tiffany. Angela brings up Matt to Tiffany, who is, excuse me, Tiffany's ex-boyfriend. 
they ended up breaking up because she, and this is another part of the show that I like where it's just, you know, real life girls talking about real life issues. Uh, they broke up because he wanted to sleep with other people and still sleep with her. So, I say right on Tiffany because I wouldn't stand for that either. Yeah, I wouldn't stand for it. He was the typical guy who said he didn't want a girlfriend but treated her like one. So he was throwing her mixed signals. She didn't want to <clears throat> have sex for two years <clears throat> because she wanted to keep herself mentally, you know, strong and stable. And it just, uh, they switched to Angela trying to start her modeling career again. She's on the phone talking to agencies to try to get auditions and hire an agent and, you know, get her headshot, um, photo shoot going and all of that. Uh, one of the first questions she asks one of the first agencies, agencies she calls is um, about open call. And they tell her that you could just walk in. And she does what I would do. She laughed after she hung up and was like, yeah, walk in. Uh, they show her again, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, she asks everybody the general same questions, but they just show different segments of each conversation. Uh, the next agency, she asked if they would ever represent somebody in a wheelchair, or if they ever have, and the person that answered the phone said that they don't recall ever having advertising for doing something like that. End of that conversation. Then the next agency, she flat out asks if they would ever consider uh, modeling somebody in a wheelchair. The woman wasn't sure, but she said, you know, you can always submit your photos. And Angela goes, or I could just roll on in. And the woman goes, we have a staircase. So of course, Angela's like, so you're not handicapped accessible. And she's like, no, we are. We just have a staircase. I'm sorry, that was the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But then it gets stupider later on in the episode when Angela has her photo shoot because I wanted to smack the photographer. Then Tiffany wheels in and they're talking about, you know, <clears throat> what Angela's doing and, you know, trying to get her modeling career going and she Angela talks about how nobody's really open to bringing somebody with a physical challenge on board. It's like, holy shit, liability. That was a direct quote from her. Then they switch to... Mia and Tiffany going to work out and they're talking about their relationships and Tiffany talks about going on a date with a female and Mia talks about her doubts with her boyfriend. M Mia starts to say things like, you know, I want to go out on a date and Tiffany's like, but you have a boyfriend. Uh, but she says how she doesn't like the familiarity of the relationship anymore. She like she wants surprises and stuff like that. And you know, typical girl doubts and then typical male Tiffany's ex boyfriend sends her a text message that says, Where did we go wrong? I love you. Where do you think you went wrong? So she talks to Angela about it, and Angela asks her, you know, did you contact him? Were you thinking about it? And she was thinking about him, but she didn't contact him. Just, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, coincidence when something like that happens. And it has to suck for her. But, you know, she really likes this girl that she went on a date with, so I'm hoping that works out for her. Then Angela goes on her photo shoot. And when she meets the photographer, Anthony, first thing he asks her is if the back of her chair comes down. If you see, chairs usually are pretty high. Some are a little lower than mine, but you know, you could always generally see the back of the chair unless you mean to hide it. And she goes, no, the point is for it to be shown, obviously, you know we want advertising for ourselves. 
we don't want to be considered taboo in any realm of a career. So I can't blame her for that. Then they switch to the photographer talking by himself. And he basically says that Angela has a lot of work because it's like the boy that wanted to pitch in a baseball game with no arms. I'm sorry, but Angela has a beautiful face. She's fit. She's just sitting down in a chair. How the hell does that compare to somebody trying to pitch with no arms? This makes me want to go out and do wheelchair modeling. Just to show this guy that it's possible. And it's the new trend because Angela said so. I'm sorry, that just, that really got under my skin. Not many things that people say. I, I can count on one hand the amount of times I've let something really bother me that somebody said to me or to somebody that I know in a chair. That's one of them. I don't even know her, and that's one of them. And then Angela starts to say, you know, she knows that the guy got uncomfortable, and, you know, that people are going to be uncomfortable with her at trying to get back into the modeling world. And she's like, you know what? Why the hell can I? And that's a question that I ask people every day. If they tell me I can't, I prove to them that I can because there's no reason that you can't. There's no reason that she can't. During the photo shoot, Angela got really bad spasms in her legs. Now, I didn't know that when spasms happen, you have to get them out because there's a potential for a stroke. Like, that's the worst case scenario. I get, like, little, very slight twitches if I'm in the same position for a long time, but hers were pretty bad. She's quadriplegic, so it's different than me, but the, I felt really bad for her, and the photographer was, like, getting uncomfortable, and, I mean, I could see him, you know, first reaction is you want to stop the spasms, so I, I couldn't blame him for that. He was trying to help her to stop them, but she had, she explained that she had to release them. Otherwise, they'll build up inside of her, and it'll cause some major problems. Also, with the spasms, uh, your blood pressure can go up, you can get, like, glossy or red eyes, and then, you know, the worst case scenario is the stroke. So she really had to get them out. Then again, she said something that I've always gone by, that she knows the odds are against her, but she hates hearing the word no, and that it's impossible, because it's not. But I'm pretty sure that she's also like me where... When that happens, it drives her to go more. I love the end quote at the end of the episode. She said, the bigger the mountain, well, hell, if I have to move one pebble at a time, I'll get up that mountain. And then she said, if I can't stand, well, then hell, I'm going to stand out. And I really love that. I'll have the second episode recapped, hopefully by tomorrow. This show is on... Mondays at 10 on Sundance, and I hope you guys enjoy my review. Have you guys watched the show yet? Are you interested in watching the show? And what do you think? Who's your favorite push girl?